Hey, what's up, everybody? I told you that this is going to be crazy. And we are in the process of getting this docuseries started. Now, the first couple of videos you are going to be able to see live because these are individuals who are very proud, very proud of their uh, selected method of weight loss um, to achieve their goals. But I also want you to jump in and just jump right in and begin to explore your life. Begin to explore your weight loss journey, whatever your journey is, because the way this docuseries is going to work, we are going to tackle, address, and embrace the variety of the weight loss journey. So the young lady that I'm about to bring on is just spectacular. And the reality is that if it weren't for her, I probably wouldn't have taken this route that I took. But I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about her journey. Hey. Sharon! Hey, everybody. <laughs> Guys, this is the reason that this broadcast is entitled The 15-Year Champ. It hasn't been 15 years, but it's doggone close. And mm -hmm. I'm so proud of her. I have watched this young lady since I was a little girl. And the interesting thing is that she has always been beautiful inside and out, and she has always displayed her beauty inside and out, and it didn't take a drastic weight loss for that. Sharon, thank you so much for participating. Hey, hey. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, I mean, this, is a, this is a great opportunity for me to oh, talk about. This is going to be a great opportunity because a lot of people don't understand it. A lot of people don't understand weight loss. You know, you have to be put in our situation to kind of understand it because they only see what they see on TV. It's just oh. like when you see stuff on TV, you are thinking, why are these people so large? But it goes way further than that. So let's I jump in. Let's I to my doctor. Tell us about your weight loss journey. Tell us about oh, it. Wow. Um, okay. My weight loss started at that turn, probably about 25 after I started having children. Um, I stayed up to probably 16 till I was about 18, 19 years old. And then I started gaining weight. And then once I started having children, I would lose, but then I would gain after the fact. My largest weight after my last son, um, in 2002, I was 400 and I was almost, well, I was about 375 pounds. And that was in 2002. Mm -hmm. In 2000. In 1998, let's go back. Okay, okay. I had decided that I was going to do the weight loss surgery. Got approved, but I found out I was pregnant with my son. Uh, the option was I had, well, I didn't really have that much option. It was get rid of the baby and have the surgery or wait until after the surgery. Well, I had my son. <laughs> I had my son. So in 2000, so I got really discouraged because I moved to Georgia in 2000 and I was going back and forth to the doctor. I was gaining weight and gaining weight. I was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I won't get smaller, but bigger. But my mindset never, my personality never changed. That's it. I loved me. Regardless if I was 5,000 pounds or five pounds, That's I it. still That's love it. me. And that's the attitude that you got to have when you are even approaching and thinking about any type of gastric bypass or any type of weight loss surgery. You got to so have. You. So tell me this then, Sharon. You loved you, but you kept getting bigger and bigger. What was it that ultimately hit you and said, oh, you have got to have this surgery? Because I know you chose the surgery. Now, you, because you had it so long ago, you had the regular bypass, the one that they call the dangerous one, right? I had the first one back in 2007, uh -huh. but I had a great doctor. Because when I first went to the doctor in Atlanta, I went to a doctor out in Kanye. And the only thing he told me was, yes, you can get the surgery, but I need you to lose weight. And I'm going to send you to this doctor, this doctor. And I'll write him uh -huh. have a great day. And I looked and like, my eyes was like, okay, but why I got to lose weight if I'm going to have surgery? He never explained it. So then I went to Dr. Titus Duncan. Dr. Titus Duncan is one of the top leading surgeons in Atlanta. He was the first one. He actually taught most of the gastric bypass doctors. He taught them. 
Okay. So he was, he was my, he was, he didn't do my surgery. His, um, his co um, doctor did my surgery, Dr. Hobson, but they was in the same, they was in the same office, everything. They worked together. So, but what led to me to have the surgery, my blood pressure, my blood pressure used to be 170 over 110. Um, okay. It would drop down, then it would go back up. It was constantly frustrating. They couldn't get it under control. I was on blood pressure medicine, but it just wouldn't stay under control. So he told me, he said, I'm just going to tell you, you don't lose the weight. You may not be here in the next year or so, or maybe the next month or so, because okay. blood pressure is off the chain. Okay. So I started back again, went back to the doctor, started my progress again. And I said, you know something, but I don't have Blue Cross Blue Shield no more. And Dr. Tyler Duncan said, okay, what kind of insurance you have? I had Medicaid. He said, well, we do Medicaid. I said, but I don't want the surgery where you got to cut me from my, under my breast all the way down to my groin. I don't want that surgery because that's a drastic surgery. He said, no, I'm going to do it yeah. endoscopic. And when he told me that, I was overwhelmed. I thank God. I went in. I had a couple of obstacles back and forth. The insurance okay. giving me problems. The day that I went in for my surgery on November the 3rd of 2000 and November the 2nd, 2007, I went in at 7 a.m. that morning and he did my surgery. I was home the next day and I just started losing the weight, losing the weight. And I mean, it never changed my mentality. Absolutely. I mean, because you never let weight loss or anything change you. So, I can attest to that. It did not change anything about you. Right. <laughs> so I looked at me and said, you know something, from 402 pounds being on the table. And now I got down to, in 2010, I got down to 170 pounds. Yes. That was seven. That was three years later. I was 170 pounds. I was over 200 and some pounds lost. In 2012, 2013, excuse me, I had a tummy tuck. I had 30 pounds of fat taken off my stomach. I still have the sagging arms. I still have some less the skin on my legs. But guess what? It doesn't change me. I still wear shorts. Yes, yes. Still wear my arms out like I have them out now. <laughs> if you can see my fat ass arms, I have them. Out. <laughs> but okay. get well, let's 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 stop right there. So, did you try anything else, or did you just go straight to the surgery? Like, did you try Weight Watchers or anything like that? I was on Weight Watchers. I did the new um, Nutrisystem. I did salad diets. I did. Um, grapefruit diets. I did every diet you probably could think of. Okay. Um, but I would lose, but I wouldn't wasn't losing where it was consistent. It has to be a consistency. And if you don't have the consistency, and plus if you don't have no one kind of behind you and helping you, it all takes it's a mental standpoint. Weight loss, a lot of people don't understand. It can be mental, mental up here. I don't care what you see out there, but up here. Because one of the things Dr. Titus Duncan said, he said, I discourage anyone from having this weight loss surgery. And the reason why I discourage because he said, any surgery, including this surgery, I don't care if you break your arm, you still could die in, on that table. He said, I want to tell you that. But he said, but I never understood why you had to lose weight. And a lot of doctors don't tell you why you got to lose weight because guess what? Your liver is the first thing to gain weight and your liver is the last is, is going to be the first thing to lose the weight because they use instruments to hold your organs. And if your organs too heavy, it breaks these instruments. And the instruments are only big as a pen. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you. You know what? This is awesome. Guys, if you're just now tuning in, we're talking to Sharon and I, I have held her the 15 year original 
gastric bypass champion. And, and it's simply because not only is she talking about her journey, she's talking about her road her weight loss journey relative to how it did not change her personality. It did not change anything about her, but what it did was it gave her a tool. It gave her a tool to teach her how to be consistent in her habits. And she's also educating you on the process. And we're going to talk about the education of weight loss surgery a little bit later in this docu-series. But right now we want to focus on Sharon and the fact that she is the 15 year champ. Um, and, and you talked a little bit about some of the alternative methods that you used and how, you know, they were just unsuccessful. So my question to you is this. What advice would you give to someone that is looking for like long term self-sustainable efforts? Because a lot of people would say, well, you had surgery, you didn't do it on your own. And my my answer to that is, well, yeah, but the surgery isn't a quick because your stomach is a muscle. So if you study, so thank you for the education, but what advice would you give to somebody that's looking for long-term self-sustained efforts? Okay. Well, I'm going to say this because you hit a couple of points. Okay. One of the thing is a lot of people fail to understand. Yes. The surgery is, is just a stepping stone to a person to lose. But I want to say this, when you see people who weigh in five and six and 700 pounds, and they may be sitting at the table eating a bunch of food. But guess what? Everybody who eats a lot of food don't gain all that weight from food. So let me tell you that now. Food is not the only thing that makes you gain weight. So if you're on hormone pills, you're going to gain weight. If you're on steroid pills, you're going to gain weight. If you got diabetes or if you got some type of thyroid problem, your butt is going to gain weight. If you may not gain it here, you may not gain it. Some people gain it in their butt, their thighs, their hips. They may gain it in their stomach. <laughs> but you're going to gain weight. But the people feel, but you always want to first assume, and that's what, what Dr. Titus taught us. Never assume because a person who's bigger than you or weighing two and 3,000 pounds is because they eat. That's what you see on TV because they're eating, ten, they're eating a 12 pack of eggs. And they, that's what you see on TV. That's true. They have other health issues that cause them to get where they were at. And it got out of control. Now, don't get me wrong. Eating is something that you have to, it's just like anything else. It's just like if you're smoking, you got to get it under control. So it's just like eating. It's an addiction. Just like drinking. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's an addiction. Eating is an addiction. A lot of people don't think eating is addiction, but it is. So. When I and and on this journey, this journey took me through. I don't care if you have gastric bypass, the full blown one. I don't care if you have the sleeve. I don't care if they call it the um, the lap band, whatever they call it. First of all, when you get the sleeve and the lap band, your stomach is never cut. It's only it's basically you getting a rubber band or wrapped around your stomach. But you gotta be diligent in your eating. If you're not controlling your eating. You're not going to lose the weight. Now, I also say this for people who do get the full gastric bypass. I've had people in my, when we have these consults and everybody get together, some people don't make it through because guess what? They don't change their eating habits. You don't change your eating habits. It's no need for you to get gastric bypass because what's going to happen is you're going to bust that small pouch. You're going to die. That's the extreme. Oh, you have serious complications. Yes, so you have right. to change them. Is that's why I say it's a mental thing. Mm -hmm. Mentally, because you see a plate full of food, don't mean you got to eat that whole plate. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to. I still, I've been. This journey is going on. Uh, I had a certain 2007. This is 2020. 13 years. 13 years, and I still don't eat a whole plate of food. I eat pinches of pinches of food. That's all I eat. But my body has gotten used to it. My mind has gotten used to it. I could get a 10 piece wings. I eat three wings out of that 10 piece. The rest of it, my son take it and eat it. <laughs> so oh, yeah. that's just how my body, but you have to, you got to be diligent in what you do and you got to have a mindset. Now, what I tell people, if you really want this surgery, 
research it. You got to research. You got to look at some of your options. You got to look at yourself after you read the research and know, plus find a good doctor. A good doctor, research. Okay. And you got to know in yourself that you can do this. Don't get me wrong. I didn't have anybody here but my kids behind me for this surgery. Nobody else. My mama didn't want me to have it. God rest her soul. My daddy didn't want me to have it. God rest his soul. But I thank God I had it because I'm still here. And I can still come and talk about it. So if you really, really want the surgery, mentally, you got to get your head right before you can get your body right. That's the way. And, and you know what, guys? We're going to end on that note. You got to get your head right before you get your body right. Sharon, thank you so much. Oh, it has been wonderful. And you will be back again for the panel discussion. Thank oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> guys you heard it you heard it so this is the first in many i think this docuseries is going to be awesome so i wanted sharon to jump start this series simply because she has been going through this weight loss journey for a long time guys and i'm gonna let you know i knew sharon as a little girl and she's right i watched her get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger but she was always fly she was always fly and i didn't see her at post weight loss because she was all the way in georgia but my mother called me from a funeral and said lil i'm standing here with sharon and she had to make me know who she was and so when they sent me a picture i was like oh my god and this was in 2009 this was actually three months before i had surgery so I say that she catalyzed and helped me make the decision before I was even told that I had to make the decision. But this isn't about me. This is about the variety and weight loss journeys. I'm your girl, Lily Mae. This has been real. Hashtag Brown Mermaid. And stay tuned for more.